All right. So now we're down to the question, what saps our speed? Let's say that we're actually focusing the time on the software at hand and not fixing things, not fixing tons of bugs all the time, not fixing production all the time. Uh, what else saps our speed? How do we keep our pace up? Well, there's there's two components of speed. There's productivity per person, and then there's utilization. Okay, so we kind of talked about, about utilization, but productivity per person is a measure of how many items one person can get done in a day and in a week. And for that, we need the proper skills, we need good automation, and we need excellent tools. We see too many teams with generalist developers who are given every assignment under the sun. You know, and, and a lot of times they're called full stack developers, which, which means, hey, I'm a developer of anything. You can have me develop just anything because I'm a full, full stack. And, and what, what they mean is, no, I'm a full stack of the stuff that I'm used to using. But if we don't understand that, leaders and executives of a company see that and say, oh, I have a developer. That developer can do anything. <laughs> you know, any assignment under the sun. Well, developers are used to learning new things and developers are typically pretty smart and analytical and motivated. And they're not typically good at judging when a certain path is going to be a black hole of, you know, I'm stuck. And by the way, I've been a programmer since 1997. And so all this stuff I'm saying, I'm also saying about me and things that I've done over over the the decades and things that I've learned, okay? Because I am a programmer. Uh, we all get stuck, okay? But if someone has never done a type of work before, then start with training. Train first, then do the work. It's the same. It's the same thinking of sharpening the axe before cutting down the tree. Swinging a dull axe at a tree a hundred times may chop down the tree, but it's 10 times more effort than using a sharp ax. And it takes 10 times as long, all right? Automation is also important. In today's world, there's no excuse to have your team doing manual builds, copying files to servers for deployments, configuring settings uh, by hand, you know, typing or remoting into a server or, or going to the portal of cloud services, uh, or even, you know, individually checking uh, individual logs of services or different servers, everything should be automated. The builds, the testing, the deployments, the monitoring, all of it should be automated. As an industry, we know how to do that now in 2023. You know, if you go back to 2003, 2005, yeah, you could say that the industry was still learning what the best way to do some of this stuff was. But now in 2023, we know how to do all of it. There's great products for all of it. It's not, it requires no more invention anymore. It just requires putting the tools in place, okay? So automate all of that process stuff. All right, finally, let's talk about tools. If your team doesn't have the best tools, they won't go fast. Just like a race car, if you want speed, you need the equipment. Some of the basics, it's a super fast computer, and also a good, good network, uh, ReSharper and other Visual Studio productivity add-ins. There's so many great tools out there um, that I'm not going to give an exhaustive list, but if, you're, if your developers are just using Visual Studio and that's it, then you're tying one of their hands behind their back, all right? There's so many tools out there that make everyone productive, okay? And more tools are constantly coming on, on the market. All right, finally. Um, let's circle back to utilization. And, and this is a huge problem for why a team isn't moving fast enough. It's it's that the team isn't working very much. The utilization is low. I'm not saying that they're not at work. The team isn't working very much on what's important. Uh, you know, they may be working those 100-hour weeks, but if all the time is going to diagnosing bugs or production issues, then very little time is actually going to new features and valuable changes. So from a cost perspective, your software is ultra expensive to maintain and very little budget is actually going to new development because it's all going to maintenance. And so um, 
for the for the people who are financially minded um or the the uh the folks on, who are in company management if you're in the finance area you might say man we're spending a lot of time on maintenance or you might not even be tracking it that way you may be you may be you know tracking the salaries of of the team and saying oh this is the cost of our software team but maybe you don't have any visibility into how much of that line item in your finances is actually going to R&D and how much is going to maintenance okay that's important to know and so there's there's two things that you can do to fix this problem of uh, if you find your team going slower than you'd want them to um, and, and fix the problem of utilization specifically. First is prevent the defects. Second is prevent production issues. And I say prevent, I don't say fix quickly. Obviously when they happen, we want to fix them quickly, but we want to prevent, okay? Just like I don't want to get sick health-wise. I want to prevent sickness. How? By doing things that are healthy. Same thing in software. We prevent defects by healthy software engineering hygiene. We prevent production issues by healthy DevOps practices, DevOps hygiene. And by the way, I don't want to run run long on this. Time is limited, but we have plenty of other content around practices and tools to use for preventing defects and preventing production issues. But the first step is realizing which one is your nemesis. Is your system always having trouble? Do business disruptions sabotage your day? Or are defects a big problem for you? Do you have a feature backlog as well as a bug backlog? You know, two different lists of work. Are you having to prioritize bugs because you have so many? Uh, the biggest problem and reason some teams can't move fast is because they don't have much time left to write new code after handling all the problems their previous codes caused them. So a mindset change is needed first. Establishing quality has to be first, then achieving stability in production. Then once you have your team's capacity back, you can work on speed. When only a fraction of your team is working on new code, thinking about speed isn't going to get you much. You have to start with establishing quality. And if you're if you're in a particular code base or system that doesn't have um, that doesn't have your safety net, doesn't have multiple levels of automated test suites that capture problems, then you've got a lot of work to do on establishing quality. There's a lot of practices. Uh, you know, you, the, the testing pyramid is a good um, mindset of of baseline small scope tests. And then the next layer of testing, and then at the top, you have your full system acceptance testing that run on a fully deployed instance of your software. But you need your, you need your entire safety net, and test is one piece. Uh, multiple layers of static code analysis is another part of establishing quality. We talk a lot about quality, but you have, you have to have the mindset of getting to a high baseline of quality first, then a high baseline of stability in production, and then you can work on speed. And, and getting your team faster.